Hi, I'm Liz Fisher. I'm an audio assist, and you're watching The Morning Show. Over. Under. Over. Under. Over. Welcome to The Morning Show. Where it's actually 6.30 at night, I'm Maggie Schneider. And I'm Matt Caruso. We are so excited to be back again for another episode, but before we came back, we actually took a little vacation to celebrate. We hope you guys all had a great holiday weekend, but we're pretty sure ours was better. Let's look at some photos. Oh, there we are at the Atlantis. That's where our vacation started. Oh, Maggie. I'm so miserable. I hated going anywhere with you. What's with the enthusiasm? Again, oh, enth beach. enthusiasm. I wanted to have fun, do That's one of these winky peace sign pictures, but no. No. Never want to participate. Oh. Again, I, I, I wanted to have some pizzazz in Paris. And, and the, look at you. The sun was in my eyes. Leave me alone. Oh, this is my favorite. If I could have really pushed the Leaning Tower of Pisa on top of you and squashed you like a bug, I totally would have. You're rude. Hogwarts. Hogwarts, the wonderful world of wizardry. I, was I happy can't there. say that at all. I was happy there. Learning some dance moves in India. And not being surprised by you being an idiot. Great. Have some fun. Okay, so we found this cupboard in India. We decided to take a step through it and see what was in there. Narnia! Beautiful. Narnia. Oh, oh, wait, it was cold, and once again, I was miserable. Look who oh, we found in Narnia. Again. I don't believe in Santa Claus anymore. Well, we saw him. So here, here we are at the real Jersey Shore, but our friend Snooky stumbled in the shot. Ruined our picture. Ruined it completely. Rude. Our least favorite state, Ohio. Ohio. Mm. Ugh, corn. Corn. Oh, and then I tried to put you in the hospital by strangling you to death. Wonderful. Again, you're so rude. You're not, mean to me. Not rude. Not rude. Our favorite town of America, or with our good friend Edward Cullen, Forks, the home of Twilight. I love translucent men. <laughs> this isn't photoshopped at all. Just no. saying. No, not at all. Mm -mm. And our favorite destination, a romantic trip, a oh. romantic trip oh. to the Titanic. Oh, I hated you touching me. Ugh. Why? Because you're gross. Oh man. Only A-list shows get to travel like we did. This probably makes us a front runner for the Evies. Guys, it's not all about winning an Evie. What are you talking about? Yes, it is. This is our dream, Jake. Don't you know that the Evie Awards are the most important student-produced award show in the country? I'm just saying. Nobody asked you, Jake. You know what? You're a writer. Write that down. Uh -oh. hmm. let's, uh, let's talk about some morning brew. Yeah, sorry. Last week, Kesha released her first single off her upcoming EP, We Are Who We Are. For those who love Kesha, the song is more of the same nonsensical title and equally ridiculous lyrics. I quote, we make the hipsters fall in love when we've got our hot pants on and up. So classy. <laughs> so who classy. makes anybody fall in love with pants on? And does she own a pair of pants she that owns she actually two, wears? Actually. I have seen her closet. She owns two. A horribly ripped pair of jeans and a pair of Daisy Dukes. Can we just talk about how the title of her next album is Cannibal, yet she claims she wrote this song to respond to suicides that she heard about. Kesha, in you're inappropriate, first inappropriate. of all. And who is she cannibalizing? Other awful artists? Her eating them would be more disgusting. Yeah, she, she's just so gross, and I want nothing to do with her. Anyway, in Washington, D.C., Shia LaBeouf threw an entire cup of coffee on a man who was trying to get a picture of him drinking Picture of him while he was drinking the coffee. The irony in that situation. Yeah, apparently he ran over, threw the coffee on him, and then ran away. Is that called like a dump and run? Definitely, definitely a dump and run. Could okay, good. That. But that's how what's rude. up with the lack of class in our stories today? I mean, I don't know. Hot pants and, and coffee. Imagine if you threw coffee on somebody with hot pants on. That hurt. Ouch. That would be awful, actually. Mm. But you know what? Celebrities are rude. We can't do anything. That's why we're not rude, right? You're rude, and you're a celebrity. True about the celebrity part, wrong about the rude part. I wouldn't do something like this. I would only pour coffee on you. True. So I just want you to know that, because I'm that kind of friend. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, on the Wendy Williams show, Wendy's cooking up something that's definitely not kosher. Let's take a look at the clip from the show. Don't worry, I've got more. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to batter this really batter well. Batter it up. Oh. Mm -hmm. Isn't this good? 
Oh, you guys. Oh. What does it smell like in here? <laughs> mm hmm. This is the wig going in. Oh! Ooh. You keep frying that wig. Everybody, if you want more information about Christopher's store, chip shop. That is legitimately the most disgusting thing I, w I have ever seen. That's more disgusting than Kesha and Shia LaBeouf both wearing hot pants and having coffee. Pour. So you would not be okay with a segment of us just frying things? No, I wouldn't. If, you know, if we were frying things that are supposed to be fried, sure. And but not hair. Speaking of things that are fried, let's all take a look at this. Ugh. This is fried. Yeah. Wendy she, Williams is toasted right here. She's disgusting and just... Totally. She is totally, totally not crazy. okay. And she's pretty crazy. But yeah. other things that are crazy, Lindsay Lohan and an accomplice tried to jump a fence at the Betty Ford Center this past week. Jumping fences? She got to that point that she needs to jump a fence to get out of rehab. And apparently they jumped it to go get a Coke, as in the drink. We all know what kind of Coke she was really Well, let after. me just put it this way. She's not going to be drinking the Coke with her mouth. Mm -mm. That's fair. That There's is... going to be some of this, maybe some of this. Apparently, Coke is banned at the center where they're at, and I think we all know why, because nobody knows what that kind of Coke actually is. And it's not exactly what they were looking for. They weren't looking to drink it. They were looking to... Uh, now, this is, not, this is not, you know, a positive thing. Our note cards say that this is only a rumor, so we want to put a stamp on that. Only a rumor. Morning Show only wants to report true facts. But she's crazy enough that this would be a thing that she would do. Yeah, would anybody be surprised if that's what she was doing? I mean, Not at all. I would be totally not surprised to hear that she was jumping fences again to get things like Coke, lollipops, Jolly Ranchers, perhaps. Crack. <laughs> I might not jump a fence for Coke or anything else like that, but I suppose the one thing I would jump a fence for is a million dollars. Caitlin Sanchez, the voice of Nickelodeon cartoon Dora the Explorer, is suing Viacom in a multi-million dollar lawsuit. Apparently she was fired because her voice was changing as she was getting older. And apparently it's not legit to have a five-year-old, or it is legit to have a five-year-old who sounds like she's 20. Well, sounds great. I mean, she, it does say that she never received the payments that she was promised. But how much is she really getting paid? Yeah, I mean, to be the voice of a children's character. She, I hope she's not making more than we make for doing this show. I'm sure she is, but that's not okay. So we need to write a letter to our network, Viacom, yes. to see if Viacom can cut, up, cut us a bigger check. I agree, because we're aging too. We are. But you know what? Caitlin Sanchez, what are you going to do about her? Well, we're not going to do much. But in other news, we will talk about the fact that while Caitlin Sanchez was being underpaid, Snooki might actually be getting paid more with her own spinoff show. First, Polly D., and now Snooki. Ser we made a joke last week that the Jersey Shore is taking over, but seriously, it is. It we is. can't talk about the Jersey Shore all day, every day on this show. We because can't. seriously, Snooki and Jay Wow can sit right here. Yeah. Right here. Exactly. Apparently, the show was supposed to be about Snooki and Jay Wow, but they cut Jay Wow out of it, and it was just going to be about Snooki. Who would watch that? How is that any different than the other Jersey Shore? It's true. She's just going to get punched in the face for a half hour as opposed to just. 30 seconds. That would make the show much better. It's true. Don't lie to me. That would MTV be better. MTV could pick that up. Hmm. Correct. Well, it's time for us to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll play Your Word, Their Mouth and watch a video clip from our new YouTube segment. We also have two special guests with us today. We'll be talking with Pat Jagir from EIV's new show, Politically Erect, and Robert Gillis from Berkeley is here to perform. So stick around because you don't want to miss this. Mm -mm. Welcome back to The Morning Show. Where the games are made up and the points don't matter. But what does matter is our fun game, Your Word, Their Mouth. Let's hear what little nuggets of wisdom you guys came up with for our picture of Chelsea Handler's assistant, Chewy. In fifth place, we have Allison H. from Jensen Beach who said, Snooki in 10 years. Extremely accurate. Extremely accurate. After her new reality show goes down the tubes, you can find her cleaning our houses. Just give her the French maid uniform and she's done. She's okay. ready to go. Exactly. I think just Chewy just needs a bump it. A bump it. That a bump it. Nice. I mean, the color is almost right, just a little bit more orangey. Yeah. You just need to color correct him a bit and this is perfect. Yeah. 
Next, we have from Kevin S. from West Windsor, New Jersey, in fourth place for saying, cleaning companies downsizing measures are getting a little extreme. <laughs> that's, just, that's actually just funny. That is just funny. Good that's job, Kevin. super accurate and just funny. Yeah. And in third place, Cara D. from Canton, Ohio said, they call this nugget couture. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, just give him a little Gucci accessory, yes. and this is perfect. Yeah. All these captions Louis are just just a, just a little bit off from being perfectly accurate. It's true. Coming in in second place, we have Alexandra M. from Jensen Beach, who said, hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work, I go. Oh, the dwarf reference. Yeah, we were waiting for it. And in first place, we have Tyler H. from Long Island, New York, who said, Spanish midgets for those hard-to-reach places. <laughs> yeah, inappropriate, but we love it. We do. Congratulations, Tyler. You win a round of applause. And a suggestive wink. I'm sorry, but I'm really bad at winking, so you're actually not going to get it. Thanks for playing your word, their mouth. Check out our Tumblr page at eiv.tms.tumblr.com for the next episode's caption contest. We actually have a new segment this week called Clip of the Morning, where we're going to choose our favorite YouTube clip and just talk about how ridiculous it is. Our clip this week features someone who is more pathetic than Matt, which I didn't think was possible. You're rude. I'm not. Okay. Everybody meet Marcel the Shell with shoes on. Clip of the Morning to ya. My name is Marcel, and I'm partially a shell, as you can see on my body, but I also have shoes and um, a face. Guess what I wear as a hat? What? A lentil. One time I nibbled on a piece of cheese and my cholesterol went up to 900. Guess what I used to tie my skis to my car? What? A hair. No, Matt, you probably still are more pathetic than that. That's just not true. He's my new best friend. I love him. He's great. So you have one friend now. Great. I wonder what Marcel uses for skis. Guess what my skis are? What? Toenails from a man. I still love him, and he's still my best friend. And no, I do have more than one friend. And you know what? You are still a little weird, just like he is. Mm, speaking of weird things, which I'm not, let's talk about the public safety log from the Berkeley Beacon. On each new episode, we'll take a look at the week's public safety log, where we'll talk about the most obnoxious incident that week. A man at 10 Boylston Place was escorted off the premises Wednesday by ECPD after the man was handing out business cards and acting strangely. The subject was evasive during questioning, police said, and was jumping out and offering cards to passersby. Maggie? Hey, anyone want my business cards? I just got them laminated. They're really cool. Come check them out. Someone please escort her off the premises. Take some business cards. Hey. <laughs> Thanks. Well, now that Maggie is gone, hey, Alyssa, can we, uh, can we talk for a second? Yeah, sure, Matt. So uh, this is Alyssa, one of our writers on the show. Hey, Mom. And we had a great idea to do a package on the Fall Fun Fest that happened over the weekend in Faneuil Hall, but we ran into some problems with the police. Alyssa, what happened? You know, I was so excited. Maggie let me out of my room, and I was walking down Faneuil Hall with an equally tall and awkward writer, Phil, and they stopped us and said that we couldn't film there. Apparently, the rent-a-cops at Faneuil Hall had never heard of the morning show. Whoa. Sass. Yeah. You're getting sassy. Well, let's take a look at the package anyway. So despite the issues they had, I think that actually came out pretty good. Definitely. Now we're here with Pat Jugier, co-EP and correspondent for EIV's new show, Politically Erect. Let's take a look at a clip from the show. Welcome back to Politically Erect. My name is Brandon Smith. Somehow we haven't been canceled yet, but this next piece might do it. Now I assume if you're watching this show, you're as grossed out and fed up with the over 65 crowd as I am. I have absolutely no fond memories of old people. Pat, thanks for joining us. What have you found out down at the nursing home? 
Euthanasia is certainly a buzzword around here. I asked one man to keep blinking if he wanted to be put down, and let's just say that he's blinking so much his eyes are permanently closed. Um, I happen to have witnessed and been a part of a bear of shark a, of fight. Of a bear shark fight. Where did this bear shark fight take place? Down in Louisiana. It was okay, in Louisiana. I spent where? three weeks fighting okay. sharks. Oh, well, Obamacare is certainly taking its toll down here. With all these free t-shirts, coffee mugs, prescriptions, <clears throat> people are using Bengay like it's sunscreen. Avoid the white man at all costs. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. I yeah. love it. It's yeah. one of my favorite new EIV shows. It's great. Wow. Yeah, Besides it's, it's this definitely one. really funny. Um, so how did the idea for the show come about? Well, we thought of it sometime uh, about the beginning of last year, and then I went to the castle in the spring, and uh, we pitched it to EIV then, and uh, ever since then we've just been doing the show. So how it came about in the beginning of last year, but was it like a running joke? Was it? No, I think... Um, we felt like a lot of shows here at Emerson, they aim to entertain, they aim to win an Evie. And we really just wanted to put together a show that helps people and one that can just touch people in ways they haven't been touched before. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Definitely true. Now, Politically Erect is a very interesting name. How'd you guys come up with that? Well, our tagline is, it's not hard to watch, but it'll make you hard. And we think that the, <laughs> the title itself really just gets across the message of the show. I definitely have to agree with that. So I can you tell us a little bit about like what's on each show, what the format is, what to expect? Yeah, definitely. Each week we, have, uh, we do fake news, we comment on the news, um, we do at least one or two sketches each week. And then we'll throw in either like a mailbag or a debate. You know, nothing as serious as like Kesha or uh, Dory the Explorer, but <laughs> we try and take on lighter issues. So there's like a theme to each episode, right? Yes, so the first episode was the economy. And now, then we'll do healthcare, religion, women's rights, gay marriage, and uh, racism and immigration. You guys are handling some difficult issues. Yeah. I don't know if they're more difficult than Kesha, though. I don't know. That's true. That's why, that's for the more experienced shows like you guys. <laughs> now, you have three wonderful hosts who we just saw in that clip. Mm. How'd you find them? Well, we have, in total, we have six hosts, and then Omri Roland does uh, a segment each week. But for the most part, we we're seeing who could keep a, the best straight face. Um, we had a very, very intense interview process, some really hard questions. And then we did an obstacle course, actually. And um, you had to, the last stage was actually you had to pin me down physically, cage match. And whoever did the best were the six. And Leisha was actually able to do that. Yes, actually, she had the fastest time. She's. I think we might need to get Leisha on this show. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's. But if she, no, 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 I don't think. No, no, no. I'm okay. just gonna say there I don't, I don't no think you want it. She is a bear. <laughs> she there. You, you don't want it. So I know you wanted to like help people, touch mm -hmm. them in ways they haven't been touched before. But like, why a political humor show as opposed to? Well, I think there's just so much to do. There's so much material. We're not, we're a very bipartisan show. We're not trying to lean to the left or the right. I think the best way to do it is just to make fun of it all. And we think by doing a different theme each week, we can uh, supply a lot of jokes. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, and everybody should me. watch the show. It's Definitely phenomenal. Everyone. Literally So everyone. we're going to take another short break. But when we come back, Robert Gillis will be performing two acoustic songs for us. Stay tuned. And now here to perform is Robert Gillis with his song, Smile. I want to start a pandemic. I'll just smile at everyone. I want to go with it. Oh, don't just stop and stare, because there's a comical gimmick. And the mimicry one smile can spread a mile then overseas on the breeze. It's so easy if you try. And smile a while Take a step back Open up your heart and use it all What's the point if You see Karen, you can't prove it All along I've been trying to find a way to say this right Forget it All the words have hit the fan And found themselves shredded Oh and the wind made sure that we would never stick to it All the things we said, well, the promises, a promise of the day that you're dead Now I see, you gotta act to what you say And take a step back, open up your heart and use it all What's the point if you see Karen, you can't prove it All along, I've been trying to find a way to say this right 
when a little action shines so bright. Action, reaction, these words are distracting me. Why can't we act like the people we're trying to be diddy? Save the words for the after party. Prove yourself for the way you live your life. Prove yourself, make a choice, and take a step back. Open up your heart and use it on. What's the point if you see you care and you can't prove it all along? I've been trying to find a way to say this right. When a little action shines, so take a step back. Open up your heart and use it all. What's the point if you see you care and you can't prove it all along? I've been trying to find a way to say this right. When a little action shines so bright, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I have been performing, uh, you know what, my parents pushed me into it. I was like four years old, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. And you said that you've traveled all over the world, much like we did on vacation. Yep. What was your favorite place? Um, I have got to say, because uh, I used to be a dancer as well, um, that Japan was probably my favorite place because I got to sing and dance at the same time, sort of, in a mall full of crazy, awesome Japanese people, which was great. It sounds like quite the adventure. Speaking of adventure, I wonder what Marcel the, the Shell with Shoes on does for adventures. Guess what I do for adventure? What? I hang glide on a Dorito. I love him. He's still my favorite hermit crab. Uh, I'm sure he is, Matt. And, well, thank you for being here. We've enjoyed having you on the show. And if you want to hear more of Robert's music, check him out on MySpace, YouTube, or visit his official website at robertgillis.com. And you can buy some of his music on iTunes as well. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and now to close us out, here's Robert performing his song, Dating with the Checklist. a subtle rouge are your eyes a shade of blue do they sparkle like the embers of an evening fire in June have you Mona Lisa smile have you Botticelli style are you subtle like the movement of the flowing Nile I'm dating with a checklist and girl you don't deserve this from me I'm dating with a checklist And I don't know your name Are your cheeks a powdered pink? Are your lashes scripted ink? Are they softened like the flowing Of a mountain stream in spring? Are you sweet like autumn leaves? Do you glitter in the breeze? Are you golden like the halo of a late October tree? I'm dating with a checklist. A girl, you don't deserve this from me. I'm dating.